Hey everyone, Mr. Macintosh here and Apple today released macOS Ventura 13.5 update. In this video, we're going to go over all the changes in features and security updates in this release, along with whether it's safe to install on OpenCore Legacy Patcher. We got a lot to cover. Let's jump in and get started. Along with macOS Ventura 13.5, Apple also released macOS Monterey 12.6.8, macOS Big Sur 11.7.9, and Safari 16.6. On the iOS side, we've got 16.6, and for older versions of 15, we've got 15.7.8. Same with iPad OS. We got Audio OS 16.6 for HomePod, TV OS 16.6, and Watch OS 9.6. In other news, the OpenCore Legacy Patcher developers also released an early preview of macOS Sonoma Beta for OpenCore Legacy Patcher. If you are interested in giving that a test run, I put out a video just yesterday, and you can go through the walkthrough and give it a test on your test Mac. Our demonstration Mac here today is a 2020 M1 MacBook Air, and I wanted to call out something before we begin. I I've turned on File Vault. I didn't have it on with previous update videos, but since everybody should have File Vault enabled because it protects your information on your Mac, I've got that enabled just in case there's any differences in the update process. Now, to update your Mac, all you need to do is go up to General and then click on Software Update. And you should see the macOS Ventura 13.5 update in here. If you want to get more information about it, you can click More Info and it'll give you the information about the update. And all you need to do is click Install Now. Click the Agree button and then your account password and it'll automatically start to download. Now, a lot of you reached out in the previous video about why does it take so long to prepare the update? If you want the update to download and prepare in the background, all you need to do is click on the information box here and then click on download new updates and available. You don't have to click on install, so you can leave that off. But if you click on this part, in the background, it'll download the update and then also prepare it. So when the preparation time is done, it will then show you that all you need to do is click install and restart. And that process is only about five minutes. So you can really get this done very quickly. So we'll wait for this to download and we'll keep track of how long it takes to install the update. What I also wanted to mention was is that this update is being installed for macOS Ventura 13.4.1 with the RSR update installed C. So you should see it. There should not really be any difference in the installation time, but we're going to keep an eye on that. I also wanted to mention the size. We talked about the size being about 1.5 gigabytes in the download speed. If you're using an open core legacy patcher unsupported Mac, your Mac will always have to download the 11 gigabyte install. So that's normal if you see that for your unsupported Mac. Okay, we're back after installing the 13.5 update. The preparation time took eight minutes. And after the Mac rebooted to install the update with the Apple logo in the progress bar, four minutes with a total time of 12 minutes start to finish. Now this aligns with the larger update so if we go back and see just 13.4.1, like a small security update, about eight minutes. But if we go back to 13.4, right on target with that 13 minutes. If we go even farther back to 13.3.1, eight minutes. So that gives you an idea of the small security updates around eight minutes and the larger updates with some security updates and OS bug fixes around 13 to 12 minutes or so. What is the build version of the 13.5 update? Well, it was updated to 22G74. Safari was also updated to 16.6. 3.12.11.2. How much space did the 13.5 update take? Well, I took a snapshot of the about this Mac storage section and with 13.4.1, we are at 13.36 gigabytes. But after installing 13.5, we jumped to 13.82. So there was only a change of about 46 megabytes. Apple also released a full installer version for USB installer or being able to install to a separate partition, 13.5 full installer. And if you have an Apple Silicon Mac, the IPSW was released for 13.5 for you to be able to download it and restore. If you have an Apple Silicon Mac, your firmware was updated to 84.22.141.2. So was your bootloader to the same version. If you have an T2 Intel Mac from 2018 to 2020, your Bridge OS was updated to 2016.607200.0. Now let's talk about the security content of the 13.5 update. There's 23 separate security updates here and six updates for Safari or WebKit to be able to be patched here in the update. Now what we are looking for in here is certain vulnerabilities that have this statement right here. Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been actively exploited against versions of macOS and iOS. This is important because these are already out there. 
So the vulnerability is live and already being exploited, whether it's a website or an application or something like that. So this is fixed. And usually when you see that, these are the ones that want that where you want to keep an eye on and update as soon as possible. Like I mentioned with Open Core Legacy Patch for unsupported Macs, since you couldn't get the C rapid security response update for older Macs, this update for 13.5 will include all of these security fixes for the RSR update in there. So you can now update and be fully protected. Now let's talk about what's new in the Ventura 13.5 update. Well, bug fixes. I don't know what else to say. And it's unfortunate that Apple does not list the fixes that they put in there. Engineers work really hard to fix these bugs, these bug fixes. And I don't understand why it's not important enough to let us know what is fixed. But hey, that's what we're having to deal with here. The later in, that we get into the Ventura cycle until macOS Sonoma hits, you're going to see more and more of these statements. And then finally, at the very end, just security updates. And then you're going to be installing macOS Sonoma for the latest security features and updates for fixes. What's new in Enterprise for macOS Ventura 13.5? Well, Apple hasn't updated the Enterprise page at this time. And when they do, I'll put the information in the description of this video. So the Geekbench benchmarks for Geek bench 6 on 13.4.1c we have a 2356 single core and an 8572 on the multi-core on 13.5 we have 2360 and 8590 so right on target just what we're looking for now let's go over the Ventura update for 13.5 and open core legacy patcher unsupported Macs. When I do my demonstration here, I do two different Mac models. I'll do a metal GPU model from 2012 newer, and I'll do a non-metal GPU model, usually 2011 and under. On the 2015 MacBook Pro, that's metal compatible. There was no issues with the 13.5 update and 0.6.7. Everything's working great. Sound, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, everything's working very well. So that is good to go. But on the other hand, on the 2011 15-inch MacBook Pro, I did come across some problems. Now, the update to 13.5 went well on the update, but here's where the problems started. After I installed the root patches, here's the pop-up box that you'll get after installing the update. I hit OK and it installed the patches, but it rebooted. I got the progress bar, I got the Apple logo, and then all of a sudden I got to a black screen. Now, I thought maybe this might be a fluke for this particular machine. So I went to a secondary backup 2011 and the same thing happened. So there might be a problem. I'm not sure if it's all non-metals or maybe it's just this particular model. I double checked. I made sure I had my GPU disabled with the MVRAM command. That still wasn't doing anything. And the only thing I could do because safe mode didn't work either, which is unfortunate. So I tried booting up on safe mode, holding shift key and it wouldn't boot. I would still go to the black screen. So now in that case, there's only one way out of this to get back into the operating system. As you can see here, I do not have a transparent dock like we do on our 2015 device. So we know that we don't have the metal patches installed. So in that case, if you can't boot into the operating system, what you can do is you can uninstall the root patches in terminal in the recovery system. And I'm going to show you how to do that next. So if you ever get in this situation, you'll have a way out. Okay, here's how to revert the root patches if you can't boot your system. We started it up and now it's going to boot and it doesn't boot into the operating system where it hangs at the progress bar or you get to a black screen. So I'm going to hold down the option key as it boots up here and I'm going to hit EFI boot and as soon as it gets to the next screen, hit the space bar and now I can go to the Mac OS recovery. We're going to boot into Mac OS recovery and once in Mac OS recovery, we're going to open up the terminal. We're going to mount the Macintosh hard drive volume. Then we're going to bless the last sealed snapshot and that what that'll do is it'll boot up the regular version of Mac OS without any of the modifications of the root patches. So now all we need to do is go into terminal, utilities to terminal. So the first command what we're going to do is type in mount dash uv or u w space volumes you can hit the tab key to auto uh, auto complete and whatever your volume name here in here is or whatever your macintosh hard drive so if you just name the hd just name it hd but most of the default installs are macintosh hard drive so macintosh hard drive and then enter now it's mounted now all we need to do is bless the drive and then load the last sealed snapshot so we'll do bless dash dash mount and then forward slash volumes and then macintosh hard drive again and then space dash dash boot efi space dash dash last dash sealed dash snapshot enter 
Give it a second, and it'll take a few seconds, and then it'll go back to the terminal. If that happens, these commands are good. If you get an error, there'll be a problem right away. But if this happens, you just mount it. Now, all we need to do is go to the Apple logo, hit restart. There's our chime. It should boot right up. And there we are. Now you can tell right away, we don't have the root patches because we have the non-transparent password box. But this is the fact that we're now booting properly means at least we can troubleshoot with what we have once we're in the operating system. For example, if a newer patch of OpenCore Legacy Patcher comes out, we can download and install that if there's an issue. That shows you at least how to uninstall the root patches on a system if you're having booting issues. Now, it comes to the recommendation. I'm not sure what this affects or if it's just this model, if there's still some sort of a fluke going on here. But for now, I would recommend holding off on any non-metal Macs because of the issues that I'm seeing here. Again, it might be very small, but I'll put updates in the description of this video below with what's going on currently, or you can follow my Twitter or the OpenCore Legacy Patcher page if it comes out where there's any issue. If you've got any questions about this, let me know in the comments below and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.